the basis of national income measurement, explain the three approaches in measuring GDP, identify the components of GDP, distinguish the real GDP from nominal GDP, identify the aspect of measuring output and income. And of course, we can also discuss um, GNP because that's also part of measurement of national income. So national income, this is the total net value of all goods and services produced within a nation over a specific period of time. Remember, remember, produced within a nation over a specified period of time. This is an aggregate of various component flows. Um, we will discuss this later when I will give you another video on the circular flow of Macro, the macroeconomy. The most comprehensive measure of aggregate income, which is widely known as gross, gross national product. So, gross national product at market prices. So, GNP, or sometimes called GNI, is a total income that is earned by a country's factors of production, regardless of where the assets are located. So what does this mean? I am just going to use um, Jollibee Food Corporation as an example for GNP. And to give you a, a clear example, I'm gonna compare it with GN GDP, okay? The gross domestic product. All Jollibee stores within the Philippines is having income for a certain year. Let's just say way back 2019. All their income earned inside the Philippines is called gross domestic product. So that is within the nation. However, Jollibee Food Corporation have stores outside the country, right? In Middle East, some probably in Europe and some in the U.S. If the income of Jollibee adds, if you add it within and within the country and outside the country, and that that is what you call gross national product. So, and the other term for GNP is also GNI. GNI is equal to GDP plus income earned from asset abroad minus income paid to foreign assets openly operating domestically. So property income from abroad, income earned by assets held in a foreign country. So these are the, these are the income of our country earned if they are operating outside our country. So that is national income. So this is also an elaboration of GNP. GNP is an estimate of total value of all the final products and services turned out in a given period by the means of production owned by countries resident. So GNP, if I am, if you are a Filipino businessman and your business is operating here in the Philippines and also abroad your total income is called GNP. This is the most, GNP is the most comprehensive measure of aggregate income at the market prices. And then it is commonly calculated by taking the sum of personal consumption, ex consumption expenditure, private domestic investment, government expenditure, net exports, and any income earned by residents from overseas investment minus income earned within the domestic economy by foreign residents. So that, then after all the deductions and calculations, we have an example later, then, then you can get your GNP or gross national income. How about gross domestic product? So for gross domestic product, this is the co most commonly used measure of a country's national income, so GDP. 
So GDP may be defined as a total of all economic activity in a country, regardless of who owns the productive assets. So wh whoever owns the asset. So GDP has to do with the physical location where it actually made a domestic. Domestic. Um, it's like in your own house, domestic. Not international, but domestic. And then in the market, and GDP is also the market value of all final goods and services produced, like I said, within a country when, for a given period of time. Because GDP actually changes every year. Because pro, um, before the pandemic, we have a good GDP. But during the pandemic, we have less GDP. That's why it's um, for a given time, period of time. This is the total value of sum of consumption expenditure by household investment expenditure expenditure consumptions of the household investment expenditure by the firm the businesses the households are individual houses but it is aggregate so all of the houses in the philippines all of the households in the philippines sorry and of course the government purchases and then of course net export net export X minus M. So there are approaches to GDP. So you might ask what is market value? Right? Market value is the amount for which something can be sold on a given market. So that is market value. So the approaches in GDP. The first is the output approach. We're we'll just going to use basic term, basic um, example, so that um, you are not going to be confused if you have we have quizzes. This is also known as net product or value added. Focuses on finding the total output of a produce. So an example is a nation by direct me finding the total value of goods and services. So, for example, in meat production, the value of the good from the farm may be 10, then 30 from the butcher, and then 60 from the supermarket. The value that should be included in the final output should be 60, not the sum of all the numbers. So if you add... Um, 10 plus 30 plus 60, you might ask, why 60, right? So, I'll give it to you on why is it the answer is 60. Remember, value added, okay? value added. I hope you get it. If you don't get it, just comment below, okay, for this output approach. This is, this is actually a trick. Total value, um, the total value actually, or the value added is so that you will have an idea how to get how 60 come out. Sum of all expenditure liable to be incurred, such as Installation, consumable, breakdowns, maintenance, and final disposal. Plus the purchase price of acquisition. Again, the total value, the total value of this 60 pesos. How did it come to 60 pesos? I hope you get it. Some of all expenditures liable to be incurred, for example, including installation, consumables, breakdown maintenance, and final disposal, plus the purchase price of an acquisition. I hope you get that so that you will understand what is value added of an output approach in GDP. Okay? Comment below um, your answer as to why 60 should be the final output or the total value added to the meat. So the second approach is 
income approach. From the word income, equates the total output of a nation to the total factor income received by residents or citizens of the nation. So these are factor income, wages, salaries, profits, dividends, rent, and interest. So um, gross domestic product is being added through the income of all the people in the country, those who are those who are having work, their wages and their salaries, profits if you have a business, dividend if you have own stocks, rent if you are renting a place, and of course interest to the savings you you deposit or the interest to those who borrow money from you if you're a business in terms of lending. So another factor is govern, government income from capital. So National Power Corporation. However, um, however, with the government as of the moment does not anymore own most of this. The National Power Corporation they already sold it to. I hope I'm I'm right. So, uh, the, our our power, our electricity is already sold to 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 private entity. So I don't know if this is still included or maybe a uh, um, a few share is still included to this because probably the government still owns a certain percentage of the total ownership of national power corporation and of course um, government service insurance system and social security system among others that is um, owned by the government in terms of and they gain income from it then that includes in the government income from capital and distributed corporate income an income that an income that is not sent back to the household sector that invested money into the corporation. So what is this? An income not sent back to the household. So it retains to the company. So the company use this money to invest also. It does not directly goes back to the household in terms of dividend probably, but it is being invested to by the corporation. And of course, national income. Some of all the factor income of persons or household, the profit of the government corporation, the GOCC, government-owned and controlled corporation. I hope you know that Land Bank and Development Bank, DB, DBP, is owned by the government, okay? So that's part of profit of government corporation. And the undistributed earnings of corporation so you add all this that the national income is actually what is mentioned um previously the factor income the government and undistributed corporate income equals the national income in the income approach so let's not complicate life actually let's make life simpler and easier so that you will not have a hard time learning macroeconomics next expenditure approach Basically, an output accounting method. Output. It focuses on finding the total output of a nation by finding the total amount of money spent. So money spent combines consumption, investment, government spending, and net export. So expenditure, from the word expenditure, what you spend. So expenditure is the action of spending funds or an amount of money spent. So that is expenditure. That's the definition of expenditure. Funds. What are these funds? Funds, a sum of money saved or made available for a particular purposes. You might wonder there are a lot of um, roads that are repaired in our province, right? If you belong to District, this district 3 from Bakong to Basai, and even, I believe, in... in in Negros Oriental, there is a lot of roads, national highways being expanded, uh, repaired, and the likes. So that is part of expenditure approach. So our GDP is also measured in terms of how the government, the private sector, and even the household spends its money. In the current administration of the government, the platform is build, build, build. So our country is actually being measured by other countries in terms of 
how we spend on ex how we spend on making our country grow by spending on and or putting ex expenses on infrastructures like roads bridges because this also gives employment to and for the economy so as you can see combines consumption consumption so if we eat we consume and when we consume we spend invest if you save and if you buy stocks or bonds or in the foreign exchange market when you invest you spend and then when government have projects like public markets um sports amenities to be used by the public bridges and roads that's also spending and we we export our products will also spend of course so that is those are the three approaches of gdp so next the components of gross domestic products so those are the approaches now we talk about the components first consumption expenditure private consumption ex expenditure this is the c of the equation don't forget c consumption 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 goods and services are those which directly satisfy human wants and which are used up or consumed more or less during the income period if you do not have income you cannot spend diba right? so why is it that we consume goods and we consume services so goods these are things that we eat for and we wear or like our our apparels our rtws services like the spa the salon the movie theater but however this time around we don't have that because of pandemic or among other services hospitals dentists and the likes so and we use this app during or more or less during income period because we cannot always consume it we do not have income so this is the component that measures the money value of consumer goods and services which are purchased by household and non-profit institution for current and during a period of an account so consumption within a period both consuming goods and services so purchased by the household and non-profit institution so what are non-profit institution foundation school church uh, th these are those non-profit institution consumption expenditure among other the up uh, uh, among other the components of um gdp makes up the largest part of a nation's current flow of output so consumption the philippine economy is driven by consumption that's why it makes up the largest part of the nation's current flow of output consumption we always consume so these are the categories of goods and services that we consume consumer durables household appliances cars household furnishing these are just an example consumer non durables so food clothing fuel medicine among others and of course services travel medicine education expense and the likes so as of the moment travel we do not consume much on travel um, outside the country or within the country because of the global crisis medical fees um, we may not and we pray that no one gets sick but we, we still have to pay not me on medicines like vitamins because we have to boost our immune system and of course educational expense even if you are if you are studying in a um like our school a, a public institution it does not mean you don't pay any any edu educational expenses because your internet and among other things that you use for education are actually educational expenses aside from the tuitions which is free if you are in the public uh, private institution the more ex educational expenses you should prepare so these are the categories of goods and services and then the next is investment expenditure i investment is the purchase of goods that will be used in the future to produce more goods and services 
It is the sum of purchases of capital equipment, inventories, and structures. There are three types of, of investment or capital goods. These are um, new construction and durable equipment for production purposes. If you are in a business, business sector, new construction and durable equipment for production purposes, new housing and public construction, increase in stock of goods, inventories of firms. Inventories means part of the production or output. Example, building of machineries, housing construction, construction of factories and offices. So these are investment expenditure. Always remember investment are purchases of goods that will be used in the future to produce more goods. So they have in a form of future production. It's like if you are um, selling banana queue, what are you going to purchase in order, order to produce more goods? Like you have an inventory of cooking oil, inventory of a be very big wok or pan, frying pan, so that it will help you in a durable wok and frying pan so that these are, these are equip equipment that will help you to produce more goods in the future. So govern. So we have now C, we have I, and then now is government or public goods and services. What are these? Public sector produces consumption as well as investment. Are those normally would not be produced by the private sector? So what are these um, consumption that is not produced by the private sector? Essentially, for the for the society as a whole. Highways, roads, bridges. All government purchases are a proxy measures for government output. Such government purchases are treated as part of the final product. So postal services, we have postal services. I hope you know where our post office is. Health and medical services, wherein you really, if you are only paying very minimum amount or sometimes it's free at all when you visit our our RHU, our provincial hospitals, or the city, city clinic, and the likes. The police, we are not paying the, we are not actually paying the police to protect us. And the fire protection and the national defense, it is the government um, who is spending for this. When I say you might misinterpret it, we are not paying the police. We are not literally paying them like from our own income but of course we are paying them in a form of the taxes that we pay but that we uh pay or give to the government so please don't misinterpret that number four the net export x minus m so this shows the difference between domestic spending on foreign goods remember domestic spending on foreign goods and foreign spending on domestic goods. So the difference between export X and import M, X minus M, this is the net exports. These goods and services are served as a measure of economies' exports to foreign countries and are usually expressed as a percentage of a country's gross domestic product. Example, cars, consumer goods, films, the, in the international films, those are part of it. So, supposedly, or in an ideal, um, ideally, we should have more exports than imports so that we gain more than less. So, I, I have this as a, a scenario. The number... The net number includes a variety of exported and imported goods and services, such as cars, consumer goods, films, and so on. If a country, for example, exports, exports, sold out, side the country, exports 200 billion pesos worth of goods and imports 185 billion worth of goods, so this means exports is greater than imports, right? So 200 exports. 185 imports. 
then its net exported goods are 200 billion minus 185 billion. So the net exports. And that is equals to what? Equals to 15 billion. In this case, because the next net exported goods are positive number, meaning we have more export than import, they are added to the country's GDP. So if it is positive, it is added to the country's GDP or gross domestic product. Conversely, if a country's export is 185 billion worth of goods and imports 200 billion, meaning we buy more than sell more. We import more than export more worth of goods and services this means export is less than the imports then it is then it's net net exported goods or net export is negative 15 billion in this case if it is negative because the net exported goods is negative number they are subtracted from the country's gdp if it is positive that if the net export is positive it is added but if it is negative, it is subtracted to the GDP of the country. So, I hope you understand that. I will give you another video, video to, for following up. Don't worry. So, real GDP and nominal GDP. So, real GDP. So, the government actually both uses nominal and real GDP as metrics for analyzing economic growth and purchasing power over time. When you say economic growth, guys, when, when you hear in the news, like the Philippines, the Philippine economy during a certain period is actually doing well compared to a certain period um, from the previous year, don't think or don't put it in your mind that there's no poor in a country because growth is not measured by, by individual income or individual growth. It is measured on average, okay? So that's why when you see in the news that, let's just say, um, in, two, in 2019, the economy is doing well by 20%. This is just an example compared to 2017's economy. And then they will ask people um, randomly. It is in the news. Um, they will ask people randomly that have, um, do they feel that the economy is really doing well? And then people will just, no, I don't think the economy is doing well because the prices are blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and we are still poor. No, that's wrong because the gross domestic product or the growth and uh, sometimes um, the growth of our economy is not measured by the individual household's situation, but it is measured by the, by the average or how the economy as a whole, as a country, is doing well in the market. Okay? Please um, put that in your mind. The next time you hear news, whether the country is, our country is doing well or not. So... Real GDP is an inflation-adjusted measure that reflects the value of all goods, all goods and services produced by an economy in a given year, expressed in base year prices, and is often referred to as constant price inflation corrected <coughs> GDP or constant dollar GDP. Um, this is actually... For instance, um, we are now in 2021, and when they calculate this, the real GDP, because of the base year, they says, well, how is the economy of the Philippine, Philippines performing in 2021 compared to the economy of the Philippines way back 2000? So the 2000 is the base year, okay? And that is how they measure real GDP. Real GDP accounts for changes in price levels and provides a more accurate figure figure of economic growth so that's why you sometimes sometimes you, you if you read read newspaper um or in televisions if you watch news they will uh, measure 
measure the economic growth like during the first quarter of 2000 the economy is growing this far compared to the economy in 2018 so there is a blah 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 growth in the real gdp of the economy of the Philippines. so that is the base year is 2018 and then they want to see if there is really growth in 2020 using a base year so nominal gdp is the monetary value of goods and services using service says using current price in its measure. Nominal GDP is also referred to as the current dollar GDP. So measuring the country in today's price. So if you measure the country in today's price, you might probably say it's doing good but not better because of the current crisis that we are facing. So that's nominal and Nominal and real GDP. So what is GDP deflator? Measures the current level of prices relative to the level of prices in the base year. So base year, don't forget base year. Nominal GDP, this moment, real GDP, the base, and then times 100, and that is your GDP deflator. Don't worry, we're not going to do that. Or if I'm going to give you that, it's just very simple as it is. So these are an example of calculating nominal GDP, calculating real GDP base year, and calculating the GDP deflator. As you can see, uh, prices and quantities in 2010, 2011, 2012. I just wanted to study this because it is really, really simple if you, if you see it, okay? I'm not going to elaborate this. This is just a very simple instruction uh, example so that you will know how to calculate the nominal GDP, the real GDP using a base year of 2010, and they are giving you three years. And of course, calculating the GDP deflator. They are just using all the answers from nominal and GDP to use to calculate the GDP deflator. And of course, the GDI or gross domestic income. So a measure of economic activity based on all the income earned while engaging engage in producing all the goods and services and anything else that constitute the economic activity. GDI calculates the income that was paid to generate gross domestic product. I think I already discussed this GDI. 